So in a recent video, I briefly touched on my dim bulb tester. This is not anything that's completely foreign or alien to YouTube. There are countless videos out there on how to make such a device. The idea here is that you wish to current limit a device that you are loading and you want to do it in a controlled manner that's variable. Now, from that point there, you can also add all sorts of extra features onto it as you wish. So everybody's design on this dim bulb tester is different. Some will have variax, some will have watt hour meters, others will have volt meters, others will have just individual switches for a bunch of light bulbs, and some people, um, it's just quite simply a light switch and a bulb socket and two electrical outlets. But I'm referring to this device right here, which I built myself. Uh, it took me about, mm, say, three hours to get everything together and find all the parts, and it serves the full purpose of testing old tube equipment, hybrid equipment, and really anything where I might not fully be confident that it's just going to short out. The ultimate idea for a dim bulb tester beyond um, reducing the output voltage to your load is that it's also current limiting. Um, that is the purpose of the, well, the dim bulb. An incandescent bulb is essentially a resistor. Now, this one here is a 40 watt bulb, so this would be a resistor that's capable of offloading about 40 watts of load. In comparison, I have this bulb here, which is a 200 watt bulb. So this here can dissipate 200 watts of load. The way that it works in my dim bulb tester, I've actually drawn up a schematic here, is we have our AC120 coming in, our line right here. Now I have a kilowatt hour meter put in here, and in fact, it's just completely pass through for the AC voltage. It doesn't actually do anything with the dim bulb or anything. So when I'm looking at this, um, any load that is applied here is logged here, and the line voltage and say line frequency or anything like that, it'd be seen on this side. We have a single switch here. Now in one position it is just on, and in the other position it's actually a momentary switch. So this is really handy because in the momentary position, I can bypass our light bulb right here, and that way line voltage is line voltage to the load. But when I just click it into dim bulb mode, instead of just bypassing the bulb, it passes through the light bulb and then goes to the load. And our voltmeter is living right here, so it doesn't matter which position the switch is in, it'll always show me that voltage. So that's why also when you see that your incandescent bulb is beginning to glow, you'll see a reduction in your voltage over here because as it basically current limits, you'll see your voltage go down. The kilowatt wouldn't see any of this at all. So we have our unit here. I will unplug our kilowatt here. So we have this plug here. Otherwise, power comes in. We can see it comes in and it immediately goes to this outlet. By the way, it's worth noting this is a bonded ground. So the ground that comes in on the line is going out on the load. This does not isolate grounds. From there, you have our line. And I could just plug this straight in. Or we can use our kilowatt here. And that plugs in. And that plugs in there. And so it goes through the kilowatt to this plug, goes back in. And we can see it comes here and it comes to this rocker switch. Now this rocker switch isolates both the line and the neutral as we saw in the schematic. And then as a result, we can be in the center position here and it is off. There is no power going to this at all. If I click it to the on position, I would now have uh, my neutral going straight to the outlet and I would have my line would be going through the light bulb to the outlet with the voltmeter in between. And when I go to bypass, like I said, it's a momentary switch. So technically, if I had a 120 here and I hit this, the bulb would never glow. You could then just see 100 volts, 120 volts or whatever right there. It's interesting with this particular meter, I forget where I found it. It actually has a green 
spot on the dial um, to say where like 110, 120 volts actually lives. So you would go and you would just put in your light bulb and it doesn't need to be any one particular style of light bulb. Let's say that you use this on a 20 amp circuit, but I've really only rated this thing for 15 amps. Actually, I believe this is only rated for 2000 watts. Well, you have these screw-in type circuit breakers. You could also use a screw-in type fuse if you so wished, but this is resettable and you can use that for testing. This is my dim bulb tester. Now, what about, about, what about if I want to use a variac on this, whatever I'm working on? Well, I don't use this. If I want to have a variac on the line side, I just simply have it before this plug here. And if I want it on the load side for whatever reason, I can have it just basically the variac plugs into this and whatever my load is plugs into the variac. So there you go. It. This is my take on the dim bulb tester. Uh, it, it quite literally is a box using scraps found in the makerspace, um, but it is quite useful, it's quite powerful, and it's quite effective. And you can build it yourself if you don't mind working with electricity. Mm -hmm.